Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know if you're you're anything like me, but as I was getting ready for church, you know, I, I grabbed my, my rain shoes. I, I have my specific dress shoes that I use for the rain. And I thought, you know what, I, just in case they get muddy. And just, I prepare for the rain, and I prepare for that, and I just wonder if, if we, if we prepare, if I could speak English, y'all see that? I'm already getting in the spirit. <laughs> Amen. I wonder, if, do we prepare for God to shower us? Have we already made our hearts ready for God to move in this house tonight? I mean, honestly speaking, I can, I, I, you know, I can be honest with you, I had a pretty rough two weeks. If I get in the vehicle, it's liable to break down. My Lord, I put mine in the shop. I put my in-laws in the shop. Uh, I've had a rough go. But you know what? All is okay if I can find myself in the presence of God tonight. I've got a few prayer requests tonight. If you would, go ahead and stand. Let's continue to remember the cut shawls and the wheel banks. Let's remember Terry Moss. Sister Judy Netto, let's remember uh, John Marsh, and let's remember the Lotte family. Uh, Mr. George went for a tumble the other day and in the hospital, and Lord, if it was me, I would want God to move. You know, I say this a lot, I feel like, at times, but I really feel something special in the house tonight. I feel like God wants to do something special in the house you know, I'll tell you this because I've had a pretty rough two weeks when it comes to these things, but I told our class two weeks ago, I said, when we have class again, I said, I want us to come back and tell us what God's done good for us. I went to the doctor. He charged me $150 just for a referral. And I thought, all right. He said, you know what, We're, we'll just throw some medicine in there and I've been dealing with this issue for about two, two and a half years. And he said, 
we're just going to throw this medicine at you. You'll try this, and then you can talk to the doctor. And for you nose breathers, you people who are just blessed, I haven't breathed out of my nose in two years. I started this new medicine, and I tried it, and I tell you what, I can breathe out of my nose. God is good. I walked into work last Friday. My boss cut me a check, and I thought, well, you messed up. He said, no, brother, I just decided to give you a dollar raise. Now, what I'm telling you is that didn't stop the fact that I'm able to tear up every vehicle that I look at. But what I am willing to do is I'm willing to set that aside tonight and praise God. I would love to have drove here in my truck tonight. But you know what? God's done too much for me in the last two weeks for me to think about that. And so while we pray tonight, why don't we just pray, God, I'm thankful for what I do have. Amen. Let's pray. God, I thank you, Jesus. Well, I thank you for being the great I am. God, I thank you for speaking into my life. Oh, God. Lord, that at my birth, you looked down from heaven. And you said I was worth saving. Oh, God, that if, if you never do anything else for me again in this life, You've given me a good life. You've given me a great life, God, and I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you died for me. I thank you that you went to Calvary, God. Oh, I thank you, Lord. God, I just want you to touch each of these needs tonight, God. Be with the Marsh family. Be with the Lottie family, God. Reach our older saints, God. Let healings go forth. Let your word go forth in this house tonight, God. And I praise you for it. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Do you feel something in the house tonight? Let's act on that. Let's worship with Sister Amy. Many years he walked in darkness as he groped along the street with his hands.
Aren't you thankful for the day that Jesus touched you? Anybody remember that day you first, uh, the glorious light of the gospel shined into your life? You know, there's people now still blinded. There's people now that's hearts are still hardened. But I'm thankful that one day that Jesus reached down and touched me. Thank you for being here tonight. As you can tell, everybody didn't decide to come to church tonight. But I thank God I'm here. And I thank God you're here. And I hate that they're going to miss out on what God's going to do in this house tonight. You believe God's going to do something here tonight? Yeah. Yes, God. We believe it. In Jesus' name, it's time for our missions offering, uh, second and fourth Wednesday night. If you wonder when we take up that offering, we're going to get ready to take that up. Uh, let me remind you, a quick reminder, um, on our Family Matters uh, card, I know that the date is wrong. Um, or I'm telling you that the date is wrong. Uh, our Memorial Day cookout is going to be this Sunday. It's not this Saturday. Uh, that's my fault. I got sent that final draft. And I did not catch that. Uh, so it's not going to be on Saturday. It's going to be on Sunday at 4 p.m. And that's going to be a great time. I'm so excited about that. Bring a friend if you want to. Uh, bring a lawn chair. Uh, definitely bring a lawn chair. Uh, we're going to have just a lot of stuff going on. The most important thing, we're going to have food there. And, uh, you know, that always draws a crowd. Uh, people normally come out of the woodworks. We ain't seen them in a few months. But... You know, when food gets mentioned, here they come. That's okay. I uh, just pray some of them will get saved when they, when they come out to eat with us. Um, but that's going to be a great time. We're going to have uh, cornhole. We're going to have games going on, uh, pickleball, tennis. We'll even be playing softball. Um, and just going to be a great time. Don't worry about bringing any desserts this year. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of all that. So don't worry about uh, that. Just bring a lawn chair and bring yourself. And uh, what a great weekend that we had this past weekend. We had uh, our family and friend day. Uh, that was a wonderful service. And then Sunday night, we had, a, we had just a great spirit-filled singing uh, here. If you missed that, you, you missed out on a great time. We had a, we had a great crowd. The house was filled. Uh, it wasn't filled with our people, uh, regretfully. It was filled with, uh, uh, you know, a couple Baptist churches in the area came and, and a couple of our friends across the community came. But I was thankful the place was filled because the Spirit yes. of God was here. And we just enjoyed that time. Uh, so please look forward to a Sunday. Plan on coming. That will be at 4 p.m. at the Corinth City Park. Uh, be a great time. But let's, let's give as God has given to us. And let's give to missions. Thank you for being here tonight. <laughs>
thankful that we serve a great God he's not weak he's not small come on he's he he's not able to just uh, he don't just roll over and play dead and die we got a great God that we serve come on he's greater than any sickness greater than any disease greater than any devil greater than any storm greater than any circumstance he's greater than anything Look up at the great big sky we got above us. He's greater than everything. Hallelujah. There's nothing that my God can't do. And I'm thanking Him in advance for what He's going to do here tonight. I'm, I'm looking forward to God doing something mighty. Do you believe He's going to do something mighty? In the name of Jesus. Can we lift our hands, Father, in the name of the Lord? God, grow our faith right now, Lord. I'm asking for you to do it tonight. I'm asking that you'd pour out your spirit all across this house. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you again for being here. So good to have the Lloyd family back with us. Uh, they're able to be back, been sick. Also the King family. Let's, let's give the Lord a hand clap for allowing them to be back in service with us. And uh, let's keep on praying. Everybody get a full recovery. We've got several uh, out tonight. Let's pray for them. If you have your Bibles, let's turn in the book of Matthew chapter 4. And if you came for a 15-minute sermon and letting you go, I'm going to highly disappoint you tonight. I'm going to preach to you. We're going to have church tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is going to move in here tonight. There's faith in this house tonight. I don't care how it feels. I said there's faith in this house tonight. In the name of Jesus, there's faith in this house. And we're going to see it exercise. I feel it in the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 4, chapter 23 says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy. And he healed them. Come on, they brought the devil possessed in. They brought the ones who had diseases and things in their life that couldn't be healed with a doctor. They even brought the lunatics in, the crazy folks. And they put them before Jesus and he healed them. And verse 25 said, And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. Tonight, with the help of the Lord, I want to preach with this subject, Faith in his name faith in his name will you pray with me with faith believing right now father i thank you now for what you're getting ready to do in this house under the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to do mighty, mighty things here among us. I pray now for every doubt and every unbelief that it would flee from these doors, that the gift of faith, Lord, would begin to operate right now, that the Word of God would go forth in this house. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Thank God for uh, that we have a healer. The Bible says that Jesus was in Galilee. And this is just one instance as he was teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. But also as he was preaching the gospel, he was doing what he done best. And well, not done best, but he done this 
very well. Healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Do you know we still serve the same God that was walking on the face of the earth in the book of Matthew as recorded in the book of Matthew? The God that was healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people then is the same God that heals all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among his people today. Come on. They believed it. They brought unto him sick people. Brought unto him the diseased and the tormented and the possessed and the lunatic and the palsy. Why? Because they had faith in the name of Jesus that if I get this person to Jesus, he's going to heal them and miraculously touch them. That same God is the same God that we're serving here tonight. Find in another section of Scripture, Matthew chapter 13, verse 54, another instance later in the writing of Matthew, this same Jesus, the Bible says, came into his own country. And he taught them in their synagogue. He was teaching in another synagogue. Insomuch as they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? List of the questions they began to ask. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? Don't he have some brothers named James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and only have some sisters as well that are even here among us. And whence then has this man all these things? And the Bible says, uh, and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. These people missed out on a miracle simply because they did not believe that Jesus said who he was. They did not believe that he was God manifest in the flesh. They looked at him as just another carpenter's son that had a mama named Mary and brothers and sisters. They looked to him as a normal man. And because they seen him as just a normal man, he said, I cannot do many miracles here. So when Matthew, what I read before, you have people that believed who he was. And they believed his gospel. They believed in his name. And every person, all the sick that came to him, he said, I will heal them. But then you have another group of people over here that says, I, I, I think you're a good preacher. I like your teaching. And I've seen some mighty works you do. But, but, but I, I'm not viewing you the way that you're telling us who you are. You know what that's called? That's called unbelief. Can I tell you that Jesus has a hard time working in people that don't believe? He has a hard time healing somebody that don't believe he's a healer or believes that he's a healer but he heals everything but the disease that they're infected with. But the man and the woman I believe that has belief that God is who he says he is that believes that the scripture says that with men this may be impossible but with God all things are possible. We believe his word. If we believe what he has said, if we believe what he has proclaimed, I believe God wants to work in our lives. In the book of Mark chapter 16, you've probably heard this before. He was talking to the disciples and he looked to them and said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That was the first commission. Go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go tell them about a lamb that was slain for the sins of mankind. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them that a man was born and that he died on the cross for their sins, took their iniquities and took their shame and took their sins and he bore it upon him. He shed his blood for them. He was buried and on the third day he rose victorious over hell, death, and the grave. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about me. And the man that believeth this and is baptized, I'm going to save him. 
But the man that believeth not shall be damned. And he said there's something special that's going to happen to people that believe. Verse 17, and he says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. I'm going to have some signs following my true believers. People that truly believe in the gospel and truly believe that I am God and I am who I said that I am. He said, in my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, listen, they went forth and preached everywhere. They preached the gospel. And the Lord was working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Can I tell you what happens when somebody believes the gospel of Jesus Christ? Fully believes it. There's going to be some signs that are attached to the life of a believer. Because they believe that that same Jesus that died on a cross for their sins and died and and was raised again the third day, they believe in that name so much that they believe that he can do anything. It says this, they believe he's so powerful that they start casting out devils in his name. They start speaking with new tongues. They're able to take up serpents and drink any deadly thing. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm talking about a God who pours out his spirit and power. He's going to do something here tonight. I'm believing this. These signs shall follow them that believe. Acts 3 and says, Now Peter and John went up together in the temple. At the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful. To ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto them and as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John And all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And here's what I want to get to. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power, our holiness, we made this man to walk. Peter said, I know you're looking at me like I, I, I'm a mighty man. He said, but it ain't got nothing to do with my power. Doesn't have nothing to do with my holiness, my separation, my looks. He said, it has nothing to do with me. But look what he says. He said, and when Peter saw it, he said, as though by our own power of holiness we has made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. The God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus. Whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. 
But ye denied the Holy One and just and desired a murder to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. But verse 16 he answers and he says, And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom ye see and know yea the faith which is by him hath given him the perfect soundness in the presence of ye all Peter said I it's not just to do with me but he said this man had faith in the name of Jesus Christ and because of his faith in the name of Jesus he once was lame but now he is leaping and praising and walking and thanking God I want to tell somebody here tonight I believe that anything can happen if we we'll believe that God is able to do what his word said he would do if we believe that he is the savior of our soul if we believe that he died on the cross for our sins that he was buried in the third day raised again and has ascended into glory if we believe that he can wash away every sin every iniquity what does a sickness have over him and what does a disease have over him I want to tell you that same belief that saved us is the same belief in his name that will allow us to see the miraculous power of God be poured out and displayed in our lives. Faith in His name. We've got to believe that God can do it. Acts 14 and 1. And I knew it was going to be hard to preach tonight. But I'm ready for it. I, I, I want God to pour it out tonight. I want somebody to believe His word. Despite the circumstance, despite the report, despite the naysayers, despite our neighbors, I want us to believe the word of God. Even when we can't see it, even when everything else tells us no, if God's word says it, we can hold on to it and believe it. Came to pass on another occasion, Acts 14, in Iconium, that they went both together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren in long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony to the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. When there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were made aware of it and they fled unto Lystra and Derbe and unto the region that lieth round about and look what they done there. And there... They preached the gospel. The gospel. That's the beginning. Belief in the gospel. And there, as they were preaching the gospel, sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb. This man had never walked a day in his life. Can you imagine? Always having to be carried, crawl, whatever you had to do. Never feeling your feet begin to hit the ground in the morning and walk and run. Not being able to run with other kids in the neighborhood. Always being the crippled man. But look what verse 9 says. The same heard Paul speak. He was listening to the words coming off of Paul's lips. And the Bible says, who steadfastly beholding him, talking about Paul looking at this man. And he said he perceived that he had faith to be healed. Paul looked upon this man. You know what he saw in his eyes? He saw faith. He believes it. He believes that Jesus is the Son of God. 
He believes the name of Jesus is greater than anything in this world. And because he believed, Paul raised his voice and said, Stand up on your feet. And the Bible says in this man who had never walked a day in his life, it said he leaped up and he began to walk. Why? Because he had faith in the word of God. He had faith in the name of the Lord Jesus that he is able to do anything. What does it say in Mark? These signs shall follow those that believe. Signs following faith following. We are called as people of the name of Jesus to exercise in faith. Why do you think we're baptized in the name of Jesus? Because Acts 4 and 12 says there is neither salvation in any other. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If no other name is able to save us, I believe there's no other name that's able to heal us, that's able to restore us, that's able to take a lame man and put strength in his legs so he's able to run again. I just believe that that name is greater than anything, any principality, any spirit, any devil. The name of Jesus Christ is greater than anything in this world. That's why people that believe are able to look at the devil possessed and say in the name of the Lord Jesus, come out of him. Because they know that there's power, wonder working power in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why I'm thankful that, that those demons that that one man, that group of people come talking to them. They said, the name of Paul we know, the name of Jesus we know, but we don't know your name. They knew that name of Jesus. Because he's greater. Makes them tremble. That name of Jesus is able to drive out every devil. Every spirit. There is nothing that stands against the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by our power. But by the power that worketh in us. The power of the name of Jesus. That's the greatest power we'll ever encounter. How do you think that... James was writing in the book of James chapter 5. And he knew about faith. What did he say? He said, Is there any sick among you? Or sick person in the crowd. Now listen to the wording here. He said, Let him call. Oh, no, hey, listen now. He didn't say fellow saints have to drag him to the front to get prayer. No, 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 no. He said, let him call. Let his faith make him open up his mouth and say, give me some elders. Let them take the oil and let them anoint my head and speak the name of Jesus over me. And I'm believing I can be healed. Let him call. That's the way the church is supposed to work. Let him call for the elders of the church. Listen, I don't want to drag anybody to the front that don't want prayer and don't believe. That's wasting my effort and everybody else's effort. But I believe somebody that has faith that says, I believe God can heal me tonight will run to the front and say, touch me, God. Let the elders anoint me. I believe it's the name of Jesus that's going to heal my sickness tonight. I believe that his name is greater. Can I tell you, if I got a diagnosis at the doctor tomorrow, you want me to tell you what I'd do Sunday morning? I'd come to the front. I'd lift my hands. I'd say, brothers and sisters that have faith, lay your hands upon me and pray the prayer of faith that I would be healed tonight. Because it's more than the oil. It's the faith. It's faith for them to say, I believe he can do it. And it's faith for the elders to lay their hands upon them and to pray the prayer of faith. God, I believe you're able to do it. I believe you're able to work in their favor. And I'm here to tell you tonight that the name of Jesus is able to heal everybody in this room. Everybody in this room. It's able to heal everybody in this entire world if God sees it that way. Have I prayed for everybody? And they've all got healed? Absolutely not. Some of them have died. Just honest. 
I prayed for some people, prayed with faith. Ask God, God, touch them, heal them, strengthen them, bring them out. Sometimes they don't make it. But is that going to keep me from laying hands on every person that wants to come up and, and get prayed for? Absolutely not. Because I'm going to keep laying my hands in faith. Why? Because God's word says it. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with the Word of God. I stand on the Word of God tonight. If you got a sickness in your body, you need to run to this front and say, anoint me with oil on the top of my head and pray the prayer of faith because the Word of God says I can be healed. The name of Jesus don't just have the power to heal every sickness in this room. It has the power to forgive every man and woman of every sin that you've ever committed. Because what's at the end of James 5 of that verse that says, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and I shall save them from their sickness. It goes on to say, and if they have any sins in their life, I'll wash them away. I'll forgive every sin because the person that has faith in the name of Jesus don't just believe that he can heal them. They believe that he's able to wash away everything in their life and make them a new creature. If you're listening online today, I tell you in the name of Jesus, if you have a sickness in your body, you need to come let the elders of this church lay their hands upon your head, pray the prayer of faith, anoint you with oil, and we're going to pray God with heal you of your sickness is it because we got all the goods is it because we got the best preaching no 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 it's just because we believe the word of God and we stand on his word that he's able to do anything so I say tonight if you got faith in God I'm believing he's able to do it in this very building he's able to do it tonight not by might not by power, but by his spirit saith the Lord. He's able. I said he's able. I said he's a healer of all manner of sickness and disease. Will you agree with me he's a healer tonight? Come on, will you agree with me tonight he's a healer? There ain't no sense in us praying if we don't have faith. Better yet, if you get down and pray, you ain't got faith God's hearing you, He's probably not going to hear you. Come on. You come down to the front, lift your hands, say, I'm struggling with depression, I'm struggling with this and that, and you, you don't believe God can touch you. Just come up because everybody's been telling you, hey, you probably need to come up. you got to believe that God can do it. Because I'm telling you, God can do it. Don't expect restoration in your personal life. If you don't believe that the name of Jesus, the power that's in his name is able to restore you. Come on, if, you, if your marriage, you got issues in your marriage, I, I, there ain't no sense in us having no counseling. Ain't no sense in us go, going through meeting after meeting. If, if you don't believe in your heart and mind that Jesus can put this back together, that Jesus can heal this. I mean, we can talk about it for hours, but if you ain't got faith in God, hey, we can talk till we're blue in the face. It's going to be God that does it. It's going to be God that heals. It's going to be God that delivers. It's going to be God that sets free. I, I know we're no Benny Hinn and all these people throwing our coats and people falling out. I, I don't believe that every person I pray for gets healed. And I don't believe every person I pray for gets delivered. Why? Because... There's been times that they haven't. But I've seen it happen from time to time where somebody had faith and God said, I'm going to reach down and I'm going to touch them tonight. So I tell you tonight, if you need a healing in your body, believe God tonight. Let us pray. Let the elders lay our hands upon you and pray the prayer of faith and let God work for you. If you've got a spirit in you, you got a, if you've got a, a demonic force that's seeking to destroy you, or maybe somebody in your family, you just know I'm going to tell you there ain't no devil in hell that's greater than the name of Jesus Christ. Why can I face any devil? Why can I look every devil and point my finger in the face? It's not because the power of Levi. I say I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus because I know that that name is greater than any other name. 
That name drives back darkness. That name delivers the depressed, delivers folks that's been bound for years. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you need deliverance tonight, I'll be glad to lay my hands upon you and curse everything that's attacking you if you believe that God can set you free. I'm not saying we got any possessed here. I'm not saying we got any people that's dealing with those things. But I'm just telling you, if there is any in the room, you're no match for the name of the Lord Jesus. You're no match for the name of the Lord Jesus. He is greater. He's great and he's greatly to be praised. I know this seems like crazy preaching. But if it's crazy to believe the name of Jesus, I'm a lunatic. I should be on the fifth floor. I believe that he's able to do anything that he wants to do. And unbelief stopped him from working. I believe he's a powerful preacher, but I've seen the statistics. I've watched people come up and get prayed for and they leave. They come up 15, 20 times. Get prayed for, never got healed. I got family members who died of cancer. I got family members who died of diseases. They were good people, godly people, had faith. Why did God heal them? I don't know. But that ain't stopping me from praying. Come on, that ain't stopping me from laying hands on the sick. That ain't stopping me from preaching this message. Because he just said these signs will follow those that believe. He said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall recover. They shall recover. In Jesus' name. Will you stand to your feet in this house tonight? Father, we love you. We thank you that you're more powerful than any spirit of hell. We thank you that you're greater than every disease. You're greater than every sickness. We thank you, God, that you're able to forgive every iniquity and transgression in this house. If there's any man or woman tonight that's struggling with unbelief, God, I pray that you would let faith be sent forth to them right now in the name of Jesus and that would believe you for who you are. Can we lift our hands right now? Yes, God. Nothing too hard for you, God. You're a miracle worker. You're a miracle worker, God. I pray faith God would rise in this house. If you're a believer, would you lift your hands now and say, God, we believe. We believe. We believe, God. In the New Testament they did something everybody would think is crazy You may think it's crazy But the Bible says that they took handkerchiefs Come on they prayed over those handkerchiefs Sent them to people Gave them to people what does the Bible say happened? Many of those got healed. It didn't have anything to do with the handkerchief. No, no, no. It had everything to do with the faith. I believe it was the faith of the person that prayed over it. But also the faith of the recipient. As they told them, hey, we prayed over this handkerchief. And we're praying that the name of Jesus, whatever your disease, sickness is, that you would be healed. I believe that person believe that with everything in them and and because they believed nearly every time that Jesus healed anybody in the New Testament why was it? because they believed thy faith have made thee whole you think that woman with the issue of blood cared anybody thought she was crazy but you want me to tell you how much she believed in the name of Jesus She believed the name of Jesus was so powerful that all she had to do was just touch the hem of his garment. She believed in that name. Blind Bartimaeus, you know the story. Jesus, he called out that name. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. If I can just get his attention, I believe he can do it. 
If he'll want to, he can heal me tonight. He can touch me tonight. Come on, we're going to pray just for a minute. God, we love you. God, we are people of the name of Jesus. We believe in you, God. We believe in you. We believe in you. Is there somebody that believes tonight? Somebody that says, I believe the word of God and I'm going to exercise it. I believe it. Come on, is there another that says, I got faith in his name? Maybe it's somebody that says, I, I know somebody that needs a healing and, and I'm believing that the power of God can flow through me to them. It's not by my power, not by my holiness. But it's by faith in His name. God, we believe, we believe, we believe, we believe, we believe. We believe, we believe, we believe. Oh, In the name, in the name. Elders, brethren with faith. Gather round. If you got faith tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we lay our hands upon Brother Khan right now, God. In the name of the Lord, you said that you, God, would do the work, not by my power, but such as I have. In the name of Jesus, let it be done. Such as I have to give I be in Jesus' name. Be healed tonight. Be touched tonight. Whatever the need may be. Because of the faith in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. 